Uh, SpaceX, uh, you see here the booster successfully landed back uh, on their drone ship uh, after launch. And here you can see actually the um, the footprint of the satellite. Yeah, so uh, the SL2 is stationed uh, over uh, Middle Africa, and um, so here you can see actually the its its uh, center location, its nether position on the geostationary orbit, and uh, this line here is indicating uh, the operational footprint of the satellite. And as you can see, it's 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 rather large. Uh, it's it spans half the planet. So you can use this satellite to communicate with people on this part of this of the planet, ranging from uh, Iceland to Antarctica, from uh, eastern Brazil to uh, up to uh, mainland China. So this is this is really really a, a large footprint, and this makes it so attractive for the um, ham community to operate. Um, yeah. So some details about uh, some geometrical details. Yeah, here you can, for instance, see a uh, typical orientation of uh, receiving antennas. Uh, so depending on where you are, you need to, of course, um, orient your antenna. Uh, towards the satellite in terms of elevation and azimuth. Uh, same as if you buy a satellite dish for television reception, yeah, you need to find the satellite you want to work, you want to receive. So some examples here for, for, for central Germany, for instance, uh, these are the, uh, so elevation 29 degrees, you, you need to tune it. And uh, on the next page, you see a bit more of the extremes, yeah, Rio de Janeiro, eastern Brazil, you can see that the satellite signal is coming from a quite a low elevation, of course, right? Um, Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, some uh, more some schematic of the actual payload. Uh, you see here um, a block diagram of the actual um, Oscar 100 payload uh, with its um, uh, receive and transmit branches, its uh, traveling wave tube uh, amplifiers. So I'm not going into too much detail. Um, uh, this uh, requires some in-depth. Um, uh, knowledge about uh, RF uh, technology, um, but uh, please uh, feel free to further dive into this uh, into these uh, into these details here. Um, I'm going to skip a little bit uh, through. Um, so there is actually two different payloads on the satellite. Uh, it's a narrow band transponder and a wide band transponder. So today we will mostly deal with the narrow band transponder, as this is. Uh, it's its key um, um, usage is to relay um, uh, to relay audio communication. Uh, there is also a wideband transponder which can be used for uh, for digital uh, video. Uh, however, uh, to operate this in this mode, you need quite an advanced ground station with lots of transmitting power, uh, which I personally do not have installed here. But there's many folks that do this. Um, but uh, as I am only um, operating in audio only, we'll concentrate on this one. Yeah. So this, what you see here is quite important. This is the band plan of the transponder. In fact, it's actually uh, not the, uh, the the latest version of the band plan. There has been uh, a change in this, but uh, you, you get the picture when you look at this. Um, Basically, when you look at the frequencies, right, you have, you're starting here at uh, 2,400 megahertz uh, and 50 kilohertz uh, going up to uh, 300 kilohertz. Right? So this band here spans 250 kilohertz, which can be used um, by the uh, amateur radio community. Uh, now, uh, there is uh, people who are not too much familiar with uh, different operating modes. Uh, CW, for instance, here is is Morse. Yeah? So you can operate in this band here uh, uh, use, using your Morse key. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, it's a special operating mode. You need very, very little bandwidth uh, to communicate uh, with Morse code. Uh, but what's, what's going to interest us today is the uh, single sideband uh, part of the band plan, which is this part here. Uh, single sideband is a special uh, operating mode for radios, which is uh, very efficient. You only need a very small um, uh, bandwidth uh, for a uh, single voice um, to, to, to transmit. So in this case, uh, we uh, are operating with about 2.7 kilohertz. 
uh, which is about half the bandwidth uh, as a usual telephone would have. And which also means that if you divide this band by 22.7 kilohertz, you can compute that uh, the, band, uh, the, uh, the bandwidth is enough to host up to, let's say, 50 uh, calls in parallel. Okay, uh, let's see what's next. Okay, some, some numerical data here. <clears throat> There are some guidelines uh, on how to operate the satellite. Uh, as you know, um, uh, or may not know, uh, if you are uh, an amateur operator, um, you need to have a license. Yeah? So everything that uh, I will show you today requires a special amateur radio license. So you are not allowed uh, to just um, start transmitting into the satellite uh, because first of all, you need to know what you're doing. Yeah? You could even damage the satellite if you would uh, use too much power um, or uh, uh, at least disturb uh, ongoing communication. Yeah. Um, so uh, the so you you are obliged to closely follow follow the operating guidelines if you want to um, become operational on the satellite. Yeah. But as I said, a license is mandatory, and uh, to obtain licenses um, uh, for amateur radio operations. Uh, you can take courses, online courses. Um, you have to take a test, um, uh, and uh, then you will receive your license. There is different uh, level of uh, difficulty. Let's say um, there is a novice licenses and advanced licenses. Uh, here in Germany, um, you can already uh, with uh, operate the satellite with a novice license. Yeah. So let's say the. For me, it took me. I don't know, three, four weeks to run uh, through these multiple choice uh, questions, you know, and uh, yeah, so with a little bit of technical background, it uh, it's, uh, should be a cakewalk. All right. Um, let's see. I'm going to skip a little bit through some of these slides. Uh, so it's white band transponder. Yeah, so, well, there is a little bit info about this SL control center. It's uh, located in Qatar, Doha. Uh, that's where uh, the main payload is being operated. So the, the television uh, um, uh, trans transmitters. Um, and the actual um, amateur part of the satellite is being managed uh, by a German group uh, of the uh, AMSAT chapter, Germany. And this is located in uh, central Germany in, in Bochum. Uh, I can see some of the uh, key personnel here and uh, all the ground stations. Looks looks really professional. I must say, I'm always impressed when I see these pictures. Uh, and this is all built uh, on a voluntary basis, of course. Um, so uh, kudos to Amsat Germany. Um, yeah. So yeah, some pictures about the yeah some some press uh, press coverage. So. And uh, here's some detailed information on the uh, ground segment um, for uh, the SL satellite in uh, in Germany. So uh, I should say this is the ground station that is sort of uh, managing uh, the amateur payload. Um, but all the amateur radio operators like myself, they do have their own ground station at home, uh, potentially self-made. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a uh, Lyle, yeah, there's some, uh, we don't we don't cover this, Lyla. Okay, let's see, um, skipping through a little bit. Um, of course, you're probably now interested on how do I build something like this myself? Okay, uh, so let's, let's uh, fast forward a little bit. Um, yeah, so here you can see a very, very easy setup uh, to become operational, yeah? Um, there are some price indications here on how much uh, you need to invest uh, for the individual components. Okay, let me uh, just pause for a second here, just checking, um, just checking uh, the feedback here. Okay, looks good. Uh, okay, there is actually some uh, people using the live chat uh, feature. Um, rather than the Telegram group I can see here. Uh, very interesting. Uh, let me just go through these questions. Um, yeah, so Michael is asking, since it's stationary, which continents is it accessible to? North America? Yeah, uh, this was already answered. Uh, sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, 
um, the maximum um, region towards the west is eastern Brazil. So there's no uh, access to North America, I'm afraid. I know that the um, amateur radio folks in the US, they are quite envying uh, the Europeans for this nice piece of kit. And I know that there is activities uh, going on to also install a geostationary uh, ham radio satellite also uh, above uh, continental United States. So uh, patient, uh, pa please be patient. We, we will get, give, get some coverage uh, over to you guys at some point. Um, okay, cool. Uh, back to uh, these slides here. Um, yeah, so uh, so basically, how can I uh, receive the satellite? All you need, actually, for receiving is a satellite dish, very cheap, 20 euros or something. Uh, um, I got mine for eight bucks, uh, which is a 100 centimeter dish up on the balcony, really cheap. This here is a standard uh, LNB. Um, you can buy in the shops for uh, down to two euros or something like this. Maybe you shouldn't, should invest a bit more, like, I don't know, 10 euros or so. You get a, a decent uh, piece of equipment. Um, yeah, and uh, then you need to feed the signal. This is for receiving the satellite, I should say, right? Uh, the transmission is a, is a, a bit more complicated. We're coming to this. So for receiving, uh, all you need basically is one of these very cheap um, software-defined radios, for instance, an RTL uh, dongle. Um, and uh, here uh, is another thing. This is a... Um, uh, power T, yeah, you need to supply uh, 12 volts to uh, the LNB, um, uh, depending on uh, its um, polarization. So uh, the uh, the satellite here we are using is uh, using vertical operation, and uh, for this uh, we supply with 12 volts. <clears throat> So this can be built also uh, from scrap components, or you can also buy this. You know, I, I, I did my early experiments with uh, a very cheap coil and, and the capacitor it works out of the box. Very, very, very easy. Um, so this is for supplying the LNB, and then uh, you use this RTL dongle here uh, and connect this to your computer. Um, in order to really operate the dongle, you need a software, uh, and there is a very nice software, open source uh, freeware uh, being produced by a, a gentleman called Simon Brown. It's called the SDR console. Uh, this is a, um, a running project, it's constantly being updated and improved. This is a generic uh, receiver software to operate software-defined radios. Um, so you download this software, you do some a little bit of configuration, and, and you're pretty much up and running. Um, yeah, uh, so you can already see here on the left-hand side, um, the reception is on X-band, so 10.489 uh, gigahertz. Um, the LNB is doing a down conversion into the 700 megahertz uh, area, and that's what the... Um, uh, so I j let me just go back one slide. So here is X-band reception. You do the down conversion in, inside this unit, and the RTL dongle is then... Um, uh, receiving this in the 760 or so uh, megahertz area region. Um, yeah, so that's how easy you can get um, online on the satellite to uh, receive uh, the signal. Maybe I should say, uh, for a matter of completeness, that you can even get even easier um, QRV or uh, receptional uh, by using a web service yeah there is certain groups on the um, in the community who are actually transmitting the entire band uh, into the internet and stream it into the internet it's called a web sdr um, i do not have the link here right now but um, if you just browse uh, search for web sdr uh, oscar 100 you will find this very quickly and then even folks in North America, well, anywhere with the internet reception, you can just uh, play around a little bit and listen into the satellite. Uh, that's what I also did when I first heard about Oscar 100. So I played with internet and uh, that was quite nice. Um, but uh, we want to really build something and in order to uh, be completely independent of the internet uh, and work purely on the satellite, you need to build, start building yourself. Uh, let me let me have a look here. So um, yeah, so here um, um, 
okay, there's a few more versions. And uh, when you go through this uh, these slides, there's lots and lots of uh, details on how to improve the setups. Uh, for instance, if you buy a commercial off-the-shelf uh, LNB, uh, which is designed for satellite uh, for television reception, this is not say fully compliant with Oscar 100. There is frequency drifts, and you need to uh, tweak this a little bit in order to uh, get a stable reception. Uh, and uh, so, for the uh, for the folks who are um, uh, who have a soldering iron and have a, a 2020 vision, yeah, you can do stuff like this. Uh, you would uh, replace the um, local oscillator of the LNB and replace this with a higher grade oscillator to remove any frequency drifts. Um, there's other ways to uh, optimize this, uh, and I'll, I'll show you how I did this on my side. Yeah, I did I did this with a pure software solution, um, and I did not have did not have to make any modifications uh, on my uh, on my LNBs. Uh, okay. Um, Okay, let's let's continue. Um, yeah, so AMSAT itself is also uh, providing some uh, some kit uh, for people who are not so keen on building for themselves. So here is a shop uh, you can go to them, and for a few hundred euros or so, you can buy equipment um, which is optimized uh, for satellite operations. Um, yeah, different versions. They they are uh, really um, up to date, uh, they are upgrading uh, their designs constantly and improving. Um, yeah, so a couple antennas. Uh, so uh, here are a few examples on how antennas look like. Uh, this, for instance, here is a setup with a separate um, antenna for up and down link. Um, Typically, these types of antennas are quite beneficial as they have a huge gain, you know, so these uh, parabolic mirrors, uh, they have very large gains. So you, do, you do not need a lot of output power. Uh, if you don't want to operate a dish for size reasons or so, you can also run a, a helix antenna. You can see this an example here. I think this is, uh, I don't know, maybe a 40 winding helix antenna or so. Uh, there's other stuff uh, like a, a typical Wi-Fi grid. Uh, bear in mind, the uplink frequency is 2.4 gigahertz, which is Wi-Fi frequency. Yeah? So uh, you can use um, equipment which is uh, and, and repurpose equipment, which is uh, actually used for Wi-Fi, also for the satellite. Yeah, so here are a few examples for... Um, for feeds, uh, in particular dual feeds. So uh, you can already see here, um, when you look closely, this is actually the LNB, this part here, yeah, uh, for reception. And uh, for transmission, they, uh, people have put uh, the radiating element right on top of the LNB. So this is also the solution that I am using, which I will show you in a minute. The uh, nice thing about this is that you only need a single dish, yeah, because up and down link go over the same um, over the same satellite dish. There is, of course, it's a compromise. It's a compromise because, um, of course, you're shading uh, the LNB a little bit with your radiating element, uh, which means that the LNB is not as sensitive as it would be operating uh, on uh, alone. But uh, say, let's say. Uh, when you look at the um, uh, when you look at the uh, uh, power budget and the link budgets, that's that's fully tolerable. You may not be able to receive the weakest of uh, stations, but uh, say for typical operations, it's totally cool. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, the, the whole the whole topic Oscar 100 is fully commercialized, guys. Uh, so you can buy almost everything. Uh, there's people trying to make money out of this. Uh, which is which is totally fine, you know. Um, uh, there's other folks who prefer to build everything themselves. So, yeah, so you can choose. You can become very quickly uh, operational by buying in, into your stuff or you do some experiment, which is the latter I, exp I, I prefer because uh, it's a nice learning curve. Yeah, um, yeah, some, uh, yeah, you can see here some, some other kits. So you need an amplifier, of course, in order to boost your signal. Um, there's different versions on how to do this. There's different companies that uh, offer uh, equipment uh, from stock. 
uh, go through this page here and uh, and uh, and look for what's available. Um, yeah, all in one solutions, you know. So uh, so uh, real nice solutions. Of course, uh, they come at a nice price tag. Um, yeah. So here, uh, this uh, now we're coming to a point. Um, um, and this comes close to uh, my setup, actually. This is a, a more advanced uh, software-defined radio. Remember, we've seen our uh, first uh, software-defined radio a couple slides uh, further, uh, this RTL stick, which was for reception only. This guy here can also transmit. Yeah? Um, this is actually a um, evaluation kit uh, from analog devices uh, that hosts... Um, a uh, software-defined radio transceiver chip. So this is used for all kinds of applications. I've seen uh, so many people using this. This is this for this is used for Tesla, for instance. They are doing um, GPS uh, spoofing experiments with this thing, and uh, God knows what for. Uh, and um, but also many amateur radio folks are uh, using this thing uh, to operate uh, the Oscar 100 uh, geostationary satellite. And uh, with this, I want to go to actually my page, uh, jump over to my page here. So this is the qrz.com uh, page. Let me just quickly paste this page here uh, on the Telegram. Okay, so this is like a like a Facebook for uh, amateur radio people. So everybody can set up their homepage and uh, write about their activities. Let me just a uh, quick check if there's any more questions on the on the other live stream now good um yeah so you can see here um stuff that i'm doing and um i have written an article about my oscar 100 setup that i'm operating here so this is a uh, an architecture uh, of the system uh, a drawing of the system architecture uh, you recognize some of these terms so here centrally uh, it's the uh, Pluto SDR. This is uh, this. Uh, it's it's this guy here. This is basically what I'm using. Um, uh, and um, yeah, and you can see a few components around this. The the nice thing about the setup is that you can uh, hook this up to the internet, and then operate uh, your station, your ground station. Uh, from anywhere within the house. Yeah. So I have here an Ethernet. So all of this is basically. Uh, built into a ruggedized aluminum box. Show you some pictures later. Um, and uh, it's a nice portable setup that I can also take uh, on the road uh, and uh, take somewhere to do uh, portable operations. Um, yeah, so you see here um, basically the up and the down link. Yeah? Um, so the up link here goes through a high uh, uh, a high, high power amplifier. This is a uh, 50 decibel, uh, f sorry, a 50 dB um, unit that um, can achieve up to 10 watts uh, output power, which is more than sufficient. Yeah? Uh, so I'm actually throttling down to around four to five watts when I operate the satellite. Um, when you look at the operating guidelines, there is a certain limits. Yeah, so you must not exceed those limits, otherwise you you can, you could sort of damage uh, uh, the uh, satellite-borne, um, space-borne uh, hardware. And then on the downlink here, you see, you can see, uh, well, the LNB is outside, of course, but then you see the power T to uh, provide power to the LNB uh, attenuator, and then it goes back into the Pluto SDR. And all the magic is actually happening inside here. Um, so if I scroll down a little bit, you can see here uh, the actual Pluto. So I'll I removed the uh, the casing and put this into a nice aluminum box, um, which uh, I actually scrapped from from other units. Um, there are some modifications necessary uh, to uh, successfully operate um, this evalu this this very evaluation kit. Uh, it's uh, again uh, related to frequency stabilization. So um, the oscillator. Uh, on this board is not stable enough yeah, to uh, operate Oscar 100 out of the box. So this needs to be replaced. And there's different ways on, on how to do this. If you read through my page, you can find some details. Uh, what I did was I removed the oscillator uh, completely. 
this a bit, was a bit difficult. Yeah, you need a hot air gun and you need to be careful to not blow off other components here. But uh, if you sort of, you can put some tape around, it's a masking tape or so, but uh, yeah, if you have a, a calm hand 2020 vision or maybe a microscope, then uh, with this, this is actually no problem. And what I'm doing is I'm feeding an external uh, oscillator uh, here from the outside. Yeah, you can see here, this is actually a third, um, a third um, uh, signal that's uh, running into the into the Pluto SDR to provide uh, an external stable signal. Uh, these other two here are uh, the RX and TX branches. Uh, if, you, if you scroll down, yeah, you can see this aluminum box, and uh, this is actually the, the SDR. Um, you can see here a 10 megahertz oven controlled oscillator. Uh, so this is a very stable 10 megahertz frequency uh, standard that I'm using. This this was also from a, from an old unit uh, that I used. There is different ways on, on, on what you can use this for. Uh, you can there's folks using rubidium normals from old uh, telecom base stations. Uh, also uh, one very common uh, thing to do is to use a GPS disciplined oscillator. Uh, so basically an oscillator that derives its frequency from the GPS satellites. Uh, they are a bit more expensive, but they, they are, their advantage is that they are you, you, you switch them on and bam, you are operational. This guy here it takes about uh, three to four minutes uh, to warm up and to stabilize. Yeah, here you see the power T um, to provide um, uh, power to the LNB. So my unit here is actually this is the lower level of the unit, and then on top, uh, which you don't see here now, is the uh, the power the power section. Okay. Um, now. Um, now let's uh, jump to, um, so this is about uh, uh, the transceiver box. Yeah? So this is now nicely closed up and sitting out on the balcony uh, in my setup, uh, ready to uh, become operational. Now uh, I want to spend a few minutes to talk uh, about um, the actual antenna. Um, and here uh, I have uh, put quite some effort uh, into, as you can see here, I've uh, built um, uh, I've built this helix style antenna. Yeah? So this is a this is the uh, a design I conceived last year in September before I became operational. I wanted to build an antenna uh, which is mo mostly 3D printable and uh, is um, easy to tune and um, yeah and ruggedized so that you can operate it into the in the rain or snow or whatever yeah so here in uh, in germany um southern germany we have uh, quite some severe snow sometimes and also lots of thunderstorms and, and rain coming in so it's important to have some kind of um, environmental protection for your um uh, for your gear and um yeah so this is a um a drawing you can see here uh, this here on the far right hand side is the lnb so this is the commercial of the shelf and then you see uh, a 3d printed base uh, for the reflector and here is a, a copper helix that's a 3.5 turn helix uh, and uh, this is how it looks like pu uh, being put together so these are uh, renderings um, and I show you, I, I've, this is a 3D printed tool uh, to wind the helix, you know, so that you have an optimum pitch and optimum diameter for different um, wire diameters. Yeah, and here, this is how it looks like in reality. Uh, you can see this, uh, it's printed um, mostly, oh, it's all printed in um, PETG. Um, yeah, and... Uh, yeah, you can see here after the rain shower, so it's 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 fully waterproof, and I'm operating this type of design for a couple months now. Um, uh, when you look at uh, this page, you can download the design uh, on Thingiverse, and you can build it yourself if you want to, um, or uh, write me a mail, and uh, I can help you out with uh, with printing. Um, I have a few of these items here, so for instance. Let me uh, now actually switch over to a different view. Okay, so you can see here uh, some prints that I did. Yeah, so this is the cover. 
So this is printed from transparent uh, PETG. And uh, for the folks that are familiar with 3D printing, this is actually printed in vase mode. Yes, yeah? so you, you can see here, it's actually uh, really, it's, it's just one single layer of filament. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite um, yeah, flexible, but, uh, but very strong. Uh, um, here's another one uh, down here. This is actually, so it's only vase mode up until this, this level this level up actually down here it's uh, pretty much solid because this has an uh, inherent thread designed into it uh, so that you can actually screw this onto uh, the reflector uh, base plate yeah. and um, yeah so what I'm doing at the moment I'm, I'm experimenting with different designs yeah so this one for instance is a, a taking 3d printing to the extreme yeah so this is actually uh, a setup um, which is let's say 99% 3D printed, all the metal is only um, metal foils. Yeah? So you see here the reflector is actually, it's, not, it's no longer an aluminum disc, uh, rather a, um, a built from aluminum foil. And the radiating element here is just some copper strip. Yeah? But there is, you need some um, special equipment to tune these types of antennas for optimum performance. Uh, just uh, winding the strip around and hoping it would work. This this is uh, in fact not the case. So you need some, uh, you need at least to determine the standing wave ratio for this antenna to tune it um, uh, properly. Otherwise, you would uh, have too much uh, too much reflected energy back into your transmitter. Yeah. So so you can see this here. Yeah. So here is the this is the base uh, of the of the feed uh, an N type connector, and uh, you see here. Um, it's only a one uh, turn helix actually, which works uh, uh, surprisingly well, I must say. So you can see it's quite a long one. I am ex I was just recently uh, testing uh, how uh, the optimum number of windings, and I was removing more and more windings, and I <laughs> surprisingly realized it still works with a single winding. Quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, Okay, good. Um, so uh, let's have a, a look to the to the clock. It's at twelve forty-five uh, in Germany right now. So the session is uh, th we are three quarters into the session, and maybe time for a quick summary. So um, I've talked about I've talked about uh, um, the amateur radio uh, in general. And uh, the satellite operations in particular, I've given you a little bit of an overview of um, uh, how the uh, AMSAT Germany actually realized this project uh, about its history and uh, some of the uh, technology and techniques uh, necessary and involved to uh, operate satellite. Um, yeah, so uh, I must say uh, for me, this was really fascinating to dive into this, you know. So I would say with an investment of a few hundred euros only and uh, maybe 100 hours in total, uh, I was able to uh, became, become operational on the satellite. So it's, it's, it's a project which is, say, uh, not infinite. Uh, it's, it's manageable. Okay. So um, let's just have a quick look back onto the slides. Let's see, is there anything else important to know? Uh, no, I pretty much threw this here. Um, okay. Um, so then let's get into the practical part of the session. Uh, and we'd like to actually conduct uh, some satellite operations. Um, I was already on the satellite in the, uh, this morning for half an hour or so, and uh, it may take a little bit of time uh, until we get a response. I don't know how many uh, people are operating at the moment, so it very well be that we need to uh, spend a few minutes to sort of um, send our uh, CQ calls, uh, but hopefully we'll get some answers. Uh, after all, this is a live session, so bear with me uh, if, uh, if uh, we have to be a little bit patient. Okay, uh, right, so let's uh, switch over to uh, the SDR console. 
So you can see in the background now, um, on the left-hand side, uh, a, sc um, a screen capture of uh, the running console in the background. You see there's already something going on. And I will uh, spend a minute or two to introduce you to the software. Uh, just a second. Okay, right. So um, you can see here in the center uh, the band, the band of the satellite. I can zoom out a little bit to give you a bit of an overview. There are some markers here that, uh, and th these markers actually uh, represent uh, the, the band plan. Uh, so um, here is the far right end side of the band. And if I move a little bit to the left here, you see the left hand side you see uh, part of the band which is reserved for uh, CW, Morse code. Uh, you have some digital uh, modes here and then uh, eventually the uh, single sideband for audio. Yeah, and uh, we see that there is uh, stuff going on. So uh, the waterfall diagram here shows you uh, a two-dimensional view. So uh, the horizontal, uh, uh, the vertical axis is time. Uh, and the horizontal axis is frequency. Yeah, so you can see also a little bit of the history of what was going on. Um, yeah, so, uh, and what else can you see here? Yeah, you see the frequency. So we are already tuned in uh, to uh, 10 gigahertz, 489 megahertz, 877 kilohertz. Uh, that's what I was using uh, this morning. So this this is the frequency that will be that we will be using today as well. We may actually need to move a little bit to the left. There's uh, one guy already uh, operating quite close to it. Um, so uh, the radio uh, is on mute. So I'll switch this on. And um, so maybe if somebody could just give me a quick heads up if you can hear something. So. I have now actually tuned into the left side of the band, into the left beacon. So you hear a little bit of a beeping noise. Um, I hope you can hear this, it would be quite important. But for, from what I see in the uh, audio levels, uh, you should be able to, to hear this. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, this actually, this signal, um, so what is, let me just uh, mute this for a second. What is, the, what is the satellite doing? The satellite is actually receiving um, your transmissions from the ground. And the only thing it does, it's is uh, transverting this uh, into X-band and uh, relay, relaying this back onto the ground, right? And, uh, and it does this over a certain uh, bandwidth. So these beacons you hear are actually beacons that are sent by the German ground station to the satellite and uh, the satellite is relaying them back. So, uh, and there are several of those beacons across the band. Um, and they, are, they, are, they serve different uh, purposes. For instance, they are actually used um, to calibrate the frequency. I am actually using uh, these these beacons here to calibrate my own ground station because the beacons are running on a very, very precise frequency. So I know that this frequency is a certain frequency, right? And uh, my LNB uh, up on the balcony, um, which is not very stable, um, will drift in frequency. But the software, this clever piece of software by Simon Brown has a feature that can track this offset relative to these known beacons. And that's the technique that's used to stabilize uh, the frequency. So I do not need to make complicated modifications. Uh, I'm doing this on uh, with a piece of software. Okay. Um, all right, I'll switch on it again. Maybe take it down a little bit. So let's zoom out and let's see what's going on here on the satellite. Uh, let's listen in to some of these uh, ongoing conversations. Uh, just a second. So, I need to zoom in a little bit. Okay. 
von, von, den, von den Transceiver und es wird mit circa 50 okay, so Kabel uh, gedämpft, uh, Quarkkabel und da habe ich leider nicht mehr zu machen, also ich müsste ein bisschen dämpfen, ja, es kann schon sein, ja. And there is a, uh, a German ja, operator currently uh, in a conversation uh, with somebody else. Um, so you can see here uh, the, uh, the bandwidth, um, the band. When I zoom in, it's actually a very nice modulation, very clean signal. Okay, here's the answer by somebody else. Uh, so when you look at the pattern, you can already see that uh, this is a different station, yeah, so the, the pattern looks somewhat different. Let's zoom out. There's more who's, who's here. Okay, there's another, another German guy. Here, over here, the German talk going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so you can see there's a, a bit of activity. So actually it's lunchtime right now. So many people are having lunch, uh, at least in, in Central Europe. So um, it's interesting, depending on uh, the time of the day, there's uh, different folks operating. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, uh, I've been operating uh, for a couple of months now, and I've talked to folks from uh, Iceland to Antarctica, from Brazil uh, to um, south, uh, southwestern India. And it's it's really great. Uh, I really love it, I must say. Uh, some people say, yeah, come on, it's it's so easy to operate the satellite, you know, there's no not much tuning, not much, uh, there's no uh, ionospheric interferences and so forth. Uh, yeah, uh, but anyways, it's it's really enjoyable. So what we're going to do now is uh, we'll tune into uh, our frequency and uh, actually do some operations here ourselves. Um, so let me, what was that, 877? Uh, so this is actually very close to an ongoing uh, uh, conversation. Uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So we'll just uh, put ourselves right next to this one. Um, yeah, let's see if somebody answers. Okay. Uh, testing, one, two, three, testing. Uh, testing, one, two, three, testing. Um, uh, one more comment. You you can see that uh, we are hearing ourselves back. Uh, that's quite clear because we're all we're doing is we're sending up into into the orbit, uh, into the satellite, and it's uh, basically relaying back on us. So we are hearing ourselves back. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to start. Uh, CQ satellite, uh, CQ, CQ satellite. satellite. Uh, CQ this satellite. is Delta November Delta 8, Delta Papa, November Alpha 8 Tango. Papa Alpha uh, special Tango. Special call for uh, the virtual maker fair. Delta, Delta November 8, Delta Papa November Alpha, Alpha Tango. Papa special Alpha call Tango. for the virtual call maker call fair. Virtual Calling, fair. Calling and listening. Over. Calling and listening. Over. Okay. So you can see here this part. Of the waterfall was actually our call yeah. so we do an intro call um, CQ uh, as the name suggests means hello I'm here I want to talk to somebody and uh, people who are monitoring the band uh, are uh, will see this and uh, hopefully tune in uh, uh, to our signal and answer us so as I said we need to have a bit of patient patience and uh, see uh, and wait once people actually realize there's some interesting call going on, then they all sort of pile up and, uh, and rush into you. <laughs> uh, CQ Satellite, CQ Satellite, uh, CQ this satellite. is CQ Delta Oscar 8, Delta Papa Alpha Delta Tango. Eight, Papa uh, correction, Alpha this is Tango. Delta November uh, 8, Delta Papa November Alpha eight, Tango. Eight, Papa CQ, Alpha CQ, Tango. CQ, CQ, Delta CQ, November 8, Delta Papa Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Tango. Eight, Papa A special Alpha call Tango. for the virtual special maker fair. Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. Calling and listening, over. Calling and listening, over. Okay. Okay, I'm I'm actually reading a few of your comments here. Uh, thank you, Dragon Geek, uh, that you can hear me. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Pablo Martinez Diaz uh, still using Crystal Radio. Science fiction for me. <laughs> yeah, it was science fiction for me too. But uh, it, it 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 got real, very real. <laughs> 
Uh, CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, this is Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. This is a special call for the virtual maker fair. Special call for the virtual maker fair. Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. Calling Oscar 100. CQ, CQ, this is Delta November 8. Papa Alpha Tango calling and listening over. Calling and listening over. Yeah. Okay, actually we are very close to this other guy here. Actually I wanna what I wanna do is I move a little bit to the left, yeah, so that people uh, can distinguish a bit better. So I'm moving uh, to the eight six eight. Okay. Uh, CQ, CQ, Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. Sorry. Uh, something. Just one second. Just one second. CQ satellite. CQ satellite. CQ satellite. This CQ is satellite. Delta this November is Delta 8, November Papa, Alpha 8. Papa Alpha Special Tango. Special call for the virtual maker fair. CQ, CQ, Delta CQ, November CQ, 8, Delta Papa November Alpha 8. Tango. Papa Alpha Special Tango. call for the virtual Special maker fair. CQ, CQ, Delta CQ, November CQ, 8, Delta Papa Alpha, 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 Alpha Tango. Calling and listening, over. Calling and listening, over. Keep on doing this uh, a few more times. Let's see. CQ satellite, CQ satellite, Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. This is a special call for the virtual maker fair. CQ, CQ, Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. Calling Oscar 100. This is a special call for the virtual maker fair. CQ, CQ, Delta November 8, Papa Alpha Tango. Calling and listening, over. Calling and listening, over. And we have to be patient. So, uh, folks, I have uh, actually exceeded uh, the one hour of my session. So bear with me that this is a little bit uh, 